This video was made possible thanks to the outstanding work created by Bill, also known as Lunar Caveman on Twitter. Thank you Bill, you made this undertaking a lot lighter. The orbital integration tower is finally nearing completion and the first orbital test flight of Starship doesn't seem too far away either. Today I bring you a deep dive analysis of how one of the most critical components for the success of the Starship program at Starways works. I'm talking about the quick disconnect arm, one of the main structures composing the orbital integration tower. Its primary purposes include the feeding of propellant to the Starship vehicles as well as training it if needed. It also helps guide the Starship when stacking, holding the super heavy booster into place simultaneously. In this video I will try my best to explain how the whole mechanism works, with the ultimate goal that we all have a clearer idea of what's going on whenever the action finally begins. Let's begin by looking at the different parts that compose the quick disconnect arm. First, we have the main structure of the arm, which is made up of two parts. One of them is the main body, attached to the side of the tower and which can move toward it or away from it as required. The second part is the so-called QD arm extension, which includes the claw that will grab the upper part of the booster, thus helping stabilize it while also feeding the starship sitting on top. In order to provide the Starship with propellant and other utilities, the QDR will make use of a complex system of pipelines running from the ground up the tower to the quick disconnect arm. These pipelines are then attached to the alien looking ship quick disconnect, also fondly known as Squid, an umbilical system that connects itself to the ship and provides all the necessary liquids, gases, electric power and signals to the spacecraft. In order to fulfill the purpose of holding Super Heavy into place and guiding the Starship when stacking, the quick disconnect arm will make use of what maybe is its most remarkable feature, its claw, which is really fascinating to see deploy and retract again. And in itself, the claw is made of several parts. On its upper side, we find the QD arm platform, which is split into two parts whenever the claw is retracted, but unifies into one single platform when deployed. On the bottom side, we find the actual claws, including the grippers, which could also be described as the front half of the claw. Once the claw is deployed, what the grippers do is close toward the sides of the booster. Once this step has been completed, the clamps located at the very end of the claw will attach to the booster, thus completing the process of fixing the QD arm to super heavy. Situated at the end of the QD arm platform, we also find a pair of white protective pads that will help guide and hold the ship into place. Alright, now that we've gone over the main components of the QD arm, let's have a look at how it works. In order for the catching arms or chopsticks to lift the ship all the way up, be it from the ground at the side of the tower or after catching it mid-air, and then bring it into position above the super heavy booster, the QD arm will have to move away from the tower to make room for the chopsticks and the ship. Opening up by about 60 degrees or 70 meters away from the launch table. Then, once the ship has been perfectly aligned above Super Heavy, the QD arm will be deployed again toward the tower and brought into position. At this point, the ship will be hovering around 1 meter above Super Heavy, by which time the claw from the QD arm will deploy and attach itself to the upper part of the booster. The protective pads at the front end of the QD platform will help guide the ship down into the perfect position at the same time that the gap between both parts of the spacecraft slowly closes. Once the full stack has been achieved, the ship quick disconnect will close the gap 2 meters wide to attach itself to the panel on the outside of the spacecraft and begin with a filling or draining of liquids, in this case liquid oxygen and liquid methane, as well as the transfer of gaseous nitrogen and helium, among other things. This panel is currently located around 2.5 meters above the bottom of the skirt, but on future designs it will be placed a little bit higher. To overcome this discrepancy in height, it is assumed that the ship quick disconnect will simply be placed higher, although this remains purely speculative. Now let's look at how the QD arm is expected to proceed during a launch sequence. We haven't had any launches yet, so it goes without saying that this may look different in reality. That being said, here's an hypothetical launch sequence masterfully crafted by Bill. One starship is ready to launch. The chopsticks, including the stabilizers to the sides, which up until this moment have been holding and helping stabilize the ship in place, will proceed to open up to their maximum range at 113 degrees and then head all the way up to their full height 
in order to minimize the damage that the rocket exhaust may cause. Maybe it would be safer to move them to the side, but that won't be possible because Starship is in the way. This would happen at T minus 10 minutes. At T minus 7 minutes, the clamps holding on to Super Heavy would be released, thus allowing the grippers to also open up and the whole claw plus upper platform to completely retract into launch position. Now, depending on how fast the QD arm is able to open up and retract toward the side of the tower and away from Starship, the ship quick disconnect could be pulled away from the spacecraft at T minus 3 or 2 minutes thus creating enough time for a slowly moving QD arm to clear away. However, if the QD arm moves fast enough, the ship quick disconnect could remain connected until liftoff, similar to what we see with the Falcon 9 umbilicals. If you enjoyed this video, you can also check out my other videos about the SpaceX crane and the lifting mechanism for Mechazilla. Thank you for being here once again with me and I will see you all very soon. Have a nice day, take care, bye bye.